Hello everyone, my name is Binks and welcome back to Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations 2 Prosecutor's Path, where we're continuing on in the fourth case of the game, The Forgotten Turnabout, End Part 2. Let's see if we'll be able to finish this case at last in this episode. I mean, I think we pretty much got him cornered. Just look how angry he is. <laughs> burn, Blaze, burn. I mean, just where could I possibly have a bird mark? It's nowhere to be found, you see. There's no evidence to prove that I'm the culprit, you know. That's right. There's no contradiction at all. There's no way there can be a contradiction. Not for my pops. Oh, Sebastian, I'm sorry, kid, but you gotta accept reality. Sebastian, I understand why you don't want to admit it. However, if you avert your eyes from the truth, you will regret it forever. Uh, pops, I... Just what should I do? You're asking the wrong person. Huh, I really wonder why oh, you're such an idiot, you know? Sebastian, if you really wanna tr wanna save me, you'll have to try a little bit harder, you see? You gotta use your head, you know? Honestly, you really are a useless idiot. No way! But I tried real hard! I tried my best, Pops! Aww. I went to the school you told me to go to, reached the top of my class, just like you told me to. Just look at this jacket. Only someone who graduates at the top of his class gets to wear it. I did everything you told me to do. That's how I got to be the best at the academy. I even won all those awards? Just so I could be like you, Pops. Oh, this is painful. You really are such an idiot, you know? Aww. You know those gold stars you got on your tests? I made the teachers give them to you. Wow. Every speech and debate contest, all of the judges were my friends. You know, Sebastian, if you weren't even able to notice something like that, you're really not worthy of being called my son, don't you think? Uh, 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 uh. Uh. Poor guy. Oh, even my son has disappeared. You monster! <laughs> Oh my, it's enough to make me cry, you know. He was trying his best for me, and yet, he was totally useless, you know. You are truly a despicable person. As the chairman of the PIC and as a father. Even I feel sorry for that foolish prosecutor. Poor Mr. Prosecutor. Blaze the best, you. Just what do you think of your own son? He's just a useless pawn, you see. Whoa, no? Maybe you should look in the mirror before you criticize me, you know. I mean, even you. You also used Sebastian to get close to me, didn't you? I cannot deny that. However, he is not a mere pawn. He always tries to do his very best, even if the results aren't up to par. I've seen just how hard he tries, and yet he refused to even acknowledge it. <laughs> that kid is no good, you see. No matter what he does, or is told to do.
Prosecutor Edgeworth, I shall leave this offering to the Goddess of Law to you. Deliver her divine judgment against Blaze de Best. Yes, that was my intention from the beginning. If there was a burn mark on the conductor's face, then Blaze de Best must be hiding it. What was he wearing during the auction? That is the key to revealing the truth. Well then, allow me to hear your answer. Please show the piece of evidence that proves the culprit had a burn mark on his face. Um... Gem and Ninja Mask. We haven't even used that. Why do we have that? Uh, whose testimony? I think it's this one, you guys. And I feel like this is one of those times where you really have to think. Because this is like a tricky one. Because they're, they're, they didn't really clarify or make it clear enough why we have this testimony. And you just have to look at the evidence and then also put together everything you know and what you've observed. And like, hmm, on his face. And I did make the comment on the last episode where I was like oh he's such an idiot he showed his face which he did and he is an idiot but but I will say that he had a plan right if he used the wig to cover his burn mark then of course he wouldn't think that anybody would ever know about that on his face it's pretty genius honestly it's a big uh, leap in logic. If you would recall Miss Jensen's testimony, there's still one point that remains unexplained. Two types of wigs had been prepared, one of which was left unused. And it's pretty interesting because we've had a few like moments where he lit the beard on fire, but then he quickly put it out, right? And it's like, oh, I wish that they had like done something more with it to help you put the pieces together like a little like have the beard kind of move like switch position a little that way you're like oh his beard moves or you know something like that that way you'd be like oh that's a wig but this is a huge leap that if you haven't put the pieces together then you know you're probably going to struggle at this part do you mean the wavy wig what are you talking about? It was something Miss Jensen found when she switched places with the victim. What does something like that have to do with the burn? Inside the costume trunk, Miss Jensen witnessed two wigs. One of them had been used by Miss Jensen to make her look like the victim. Now then, just what was the other wig used for? It doesn't seem like it was a spare wig. There's no need to overthink it. Just compare the attire of the true culprit, the conductor, with that of Blaze the Best. Don't stare at me like that. I mean, it's a long beard, right? And it makes sense because it's a wig. It's super long. Don't, don't you think there's just one spot where there is a huge contradiction? Specifically, around his face. So that's... Not a wig at all. Indeed. It was no wig. Blaze the best. It was your fake beard. Ah. See? <laughs> but it's weird because it's like... Uh, I mean, I could see where, like, where his goggles are. Like, maybe that's where it's attached, right? But... The, around his chin area is where I'm curious, like, 
how it works. Like, is there like a glue? What is it? What does he use? Is it just strap on? Because it doesn't seem to move much. And he's always tugging on it, so... I don't know. I I've never seen many people wearing fake beards. <laughs> so I'm very curious. <laughs> this is a real beard, you know? Don't tease me like that, Edgeworth. Your son must have realized the truth before anyone else. Yeah, he did have a big reaction to that. That's why he was trying so desperately to protect you. You also worried that he would tell the truth. Isn't that why you drove your son away from here? Yeah, because he was suddenly like, Oh, let me just put all my hatred and attention on Sebastian out of nowhere. Because he knew that his father was hiding a burn under his fake beard. Blaze the best. How about you remove that fake beard of yours? Oh! Yeah. Oh, there it goes! It burns! Oh, the goggles do nothing! What? Oh! So the whole thing is fake? The hair too? That was quick though. It went up real quick. <laughs> oh, he has no hair at all now. Ah! A burn mark! Prosecutor Edgeworth. Justice has been served before the goddess of law. For that, I give you my thanks. Or should be the one thanking you. Blaze the best, I hereby announce my verdict. You shall be taken into custody for the murder of Jill Crane. Get him. All right, April 6, 9.44 p.m., Grand Tower PIC meeting room. Mr. Edgeworth, thank you very much. I'm so happy that you believed in me to the very end. Aww. There's no need to thank me. I'm just your stand-in father. <laughs> as a prosecutor. No, as a friend. I simply wanted to save you. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I bring good tidings. It seems that former Chairman DeBest has been safely detained in the detention center. Yeah, make sure that he can't escape through that little passageway that they found and all that, you know? However, the search for the murder weapon, the auction gavel, continues. Blaze DeBest is a shrewd man. There is a good chance that he has already disposed of it. There is also one piece of testimony that concerns me. Blaze the best mentioned that the only thing he did not fake were the letters. Huh. What do you mean? First, he found this letter in Jill Crane's clothes. Yeah. Then he also found this letter on Kay, who was unconscious in the storeroom. The contents of the letter seem to suggest that the two had been corresponding with each other. Which is why Blaze de Best assumed that the two were working together. Ridiculous. That can't be right. After reading the two letters, he decided to pin the crime on Kay Faraday. In order to cast suspicion on her, he planted one of the letters in a noticeable spot. The deceased Jill Crane's left breast pocket. Isn't that just an excuse? Yes, that is what I thought as well. It may have simply been a last-ditch effort to save himself. However, before the stern eyes of the Goddess of Law, these are all trivial matters. Are they really, though? His crime shall certainly not go unpunished. With this, I have finally fulfilled one of my long-standing missions. Judge Courtney, you're gonna stop being a witch towards me now. <laughs> now that we're, like, on the same side. You tell me what you know. Why did Blaze the Best murder Jill Crane? And what lies hidden behind this case? Yes, I don't mind. You have the right to know everything. 
Long ago, Jill Crane was in love with a cameraman. That man was pursuing the black market auction as a journalist. And then, before he could reach the tree, he was erased. The feelings and the items Miss Crane inherited from her beloved brought her to the auction. She had come to exact revenge on the conductor, Blaze. Although in the end, she was the one who was murdered instead. I see. So that's what happened. While the goddess of law cannot condone her actions, we have succeeded in her goal of bringing Blaze the best crimes to light. So Judge Courtney's goal was to expose Blaze the best and reveal the dark secrets of the PIC. Um, by the way, what happened to the young prosecutor? We have been unable to contact him for some time now. Do you have any idea where he might be? I had not been truly working for him, so... I see. I feel very sorry for him. What you should be sorry for is the fact that he was kept in the dark until now. No matter how cruel reality is, he will have to accept it. If he can't, he won't be able to walk his own path in life. Ever. A father's influence is not something that is easily erased. However, I'm sure he will be able to change from here on out. Yes, that's right. Surely, you must be right. Will I too? Be able to walk my own path in life. Hey, is your body alright? Uh, yes, thanks to you. I'm so sorry, even though you're my patient. You ended up getting suspected because of me. Ouch! Yeah, she needs to pay the price too for what she did. You can't just take care of the patient's body, you gotta take care of the heart, too. That's my Grammy. Okay, how are your memories? I feel like I'm on the verge of remembering something. Well then, I shall take my leave here. I will be presiding over Patricia Rowland's trial. Ah. What would be the trial for the murder of Horace Knightley? Who's in charge of the defense? Miss Crane was supposed to be her defense attorney, but now that she has passed away, we are currently arranging for a replacement defense attorney. <gasps> Miss Phoenix! <laughs> you know they would never do that. Cowards! Jill Crane had been in charge of Patricia Rowland's defense. I'll also have to get in contact with Sebastian quickly, since he's the prosecutor in charge. Well then, Please wait! What about Mr. Edgeworth's prosecutor's badge? What will happen to his prosecutor's badge? With the chairman's arrest, the PIC is no longer functional. So I cannot answer that question easily. Perhaps one could say, only the goddess of law knows. But, but that's... You don't need to worry about me. This is the path that I have chosen. It seems you have no plans to change it either. Of course not. I chose this path to seek the truth. With the departure of Blaze the Best, the law has once again returned to our hands. If you truly desire to continue the prosecutor's path, I am willing to assist you in reclaiming your badge. I appreciate the sentiment, but I must decline. I do not relin relinquish my badge with half-hearted feelings. I see. It seems that our paths of law will continue to run counter to each other. Yep, back to being enemies, I guess. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Until our paths cross once again, 
I shall have you hold on to that badge. That was my intention from the start. She's like, are you done flirting? Like, are you guys going to have some hate sex later or something? It's like, no, I'm gay. I'm only with Phoenix. Although, I don't know. I, I can see why people would ship him and Courtney. It, it's, it's not a great ship. But I, I see where they're going. And I also could see... I, I've seen um, people ship him with Lana Sky. But I think she would have more potential with Mia. Too bad Mia's, you know, gone, unfortunately. But dang it, there was so much potential. Why do they always kill people off and then they don't have potential in romance and it's just so sad. I know it's not a romance game. We can't help but to ship people anyway, okay? However, on occasion, the goddess of law is quite generous. Oh, her music got off. <laughs> Please return this notebook to its proper owner. Oh, her notebook. Kay's promised notebook. It seems this was scheduled to be put up for bidding at the black market auction. The name Kay is written on the notebook. It seems Blaze de Best quickly realized this belonged to the girl. Since the letters he found also contained the same name. You speak as if he really did not know about the letters. Are you saying that Blaze really did not prepare the letters himself? Yes, that man said so himself. Kay Faraday's goal was to steal back the notebook. Jill Crane's goal was to get revenge. In order to achieve their goals, the, te the two teamed up to infiltrate the auction, or so he says. Unfortunately, this was all Blaze's misunderstanding. It was purely a coincidence. If the attorney from the PIC and K really were acquaintances, it would be strange that she never mentioned it to me, considering her personality. Yeah. <laughs> you really do trust her, don't you? In the end, the notebook was used as another red herring, but... It's something that is very important to that girl, isn't it? I'll make a special exception and return it. I'm sure that's what the Goddess of Law desires. That's, um... I appreciate it. I shall pray that she recovers her lost memories. Okay. Bye-bye. Um, is something wrong? Kay, I am returning something very important to you. Aw, that's cute. I like that image. Doesn't it look similar to... I can't remember. Ah, oh, the other image of her with the promise notebook. Ah, uh, I don't remember at all. I feel like it was, like, similar? I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if, if it was designed this way on purpose. Ah, uh, this is... Always greet people with a smile, even people you don't know. Never cry in front of strangers. Yeah, that's the image I was thinking of. Oh, I mean, it's a different angle and everything, but it's still cute. Look, Daddy, I wrote them all down. Yep, I'll be sure to follow all of our promises and become a hero just like you, Daddy. Ah, that's right. There was one more. I forgot to write down the most important promise. Promise number five. Always try your hardest to learn about things you don't understand. <laughs> I'll be sure to remember. I'll never, ever forget them. And she broke her promise and forgot everything. <laughs> Always try your hardest to learn things you don't understand. That's right, I'm... I am... Ooh, creepy. I am 
the great thief who steals the truth, Kay Faraday. I'm the second Yadagarasu and Mr. Edgeworth's assistant. Wow, what a change in personality. <laughs> it just proves really how people are so different with their memories, right? How memory is what makes us who we are. Even if there are some traits that are like inherent to who we are, like it's it's still a big, big change. <laughs> she looks cute, posing with this different outfit and different hairstyle. Okay, you remember. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing though. I was all like soft and gentle and girly. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's all thanks to you, Mr. Edgeworth. Even when I lost my memories, you were still always trying to save me, right? Huh. Seems you're back to normal. Wow, okay. You've gotten better. Your health comes first. Now you can relax. Just make sure you don't run off and lose all your memories again. Uh, Miss Jensen, Dr. Young. Thanks for worrying about me. Hey, if you're feeling all better, how about changing back into your own clothes? So, is all that wrapping for show, then? I washed your clothes for you, okay, so they're nice and clean. These clothes. Wasn't Detective Gumshoe holding on to them? He said forensics was done with them, so he gave them back to me. Have they revealed the results of the analysis yet? To be honest, I actually didn't think to ask about that. Now, now, more importantly, let's hurry up and get you changed, Kay. Hmm, um, still, isn't it better if we do not remove her bandages? Ah, she should be fine now. Kay just bumped her head. She didn't really have any other major injuries. You had her walking around with only one eye for no reason. <laughs> Girl... That could have affected her to the point that she could be, like, dizzy and losing her balance for only having one eye to look through. Then, why was she so heavily bandaged? Better safe than sorry! A pound of prevention is worth an ounce of cure! That's my motto! Girl, please. What a troublesome motto. Come on, Kate! Let's get you dressed up over there! We're in the same room? Did you at least go to a bathroom? There we go. She looks much better. I mean, she looked cute the other way too, but now she's happy. Now, this is definitely what a great thief should look like. A smile certainly suits you best. Aww. In the past, and now is Vin. Miss Von Karma, thank you for coming too. Uh, I am. Um... <laughs> I ship it. It's cute. It's really cute. I only came because Scruffy asked me to. Not like I like you or anything. That's Scruffy. He also wanted to see your energetic self again. Gummy? What happened to Gummy? Who knows? Maybe he was disgusted with the man who willingly threw away his prosecutor's badge. Uh, Detective Gumshoe. I must be going soon. I'll be taking these ladies in for questioning. Oh, what's going to happen to the two of them? I don't feel sorry for her. One aided in the murder of an attorney. The other forged an autopsy report 18 years ago, which led to Edward's father being killed. So, yeah, I don't feel sorry for the old lady either. Bruh. Those crimes definitely won't disappear. Of course, I will mention in court that they were being blackmailed by Blaze. I'll be just fine. As long as Granny's by my side, we're invincible. Well then, take care. Alright. Ugh, why is Lotta still here? Go away! No then, Kay. Sorry to ask so soon right after you regained your memories, but I have some questions. Sure, ask me anything you want. What were you doing on the day you lost your memories? On that day, I was asked to come to Gord Lake. 
I don't know who called me there, though. You really shouldn't have gone alone. You should have let Edgeworth or Gumshoe know. As I was watching the moon at Gord Lake, a person in a red raincoat approached me. All of a sudden, he used some kind of drug to knock me out. What? What is she saying? The place where Kay saw the moon was at Gord Lake? When I woke up, it seems I somehow ended up on the roof of the Grand Tower. My mind was still in a daze, so I stumbled around for a bit. That's when I found the person in the red raincoat collapsed. I was startled. And when I stepped back in panic, I fell from a high place and got knocked out cold again. And when I woke up, all my memories were gone. That person in the red raincoat. Who exactly was that person? Oh yeah, I was certain that I saw them walking in midair. Hmm, somehow this is all starting to make my head hurt. Please calm down. You're just a little confused because you've only recently gotten your memories back. Most likely, this is the main cause of your confused memories. Uh, your memories of two places. This is probably the main cause of your confused memories. You saw the moon at both the Gord Lake Park and the Grand Tower rooftop, which led you to confuse the two places. Huh? But aren't they totally different places? Even if I was in a daze, do you really think I'd get them confused? Most likely, there was something at the Grand Tower which led to your confusion. Um, uh, I'm gonna say... Is it the tree? Or is it the stand? I actually don't know. Might be the tree? Was there a tree at Gord Lake too? The Grand Tower rooftop and Gord Lake have two points in common. They both have a cherry tree and a food stall. Oh, okay. So either way it was correct. That's why I was confused. Ah, now that you mention it. Your memories were confused because you had been in two similar locations. The person that you first saw could not have been walking in midair. They were simply walking on the ground at Gord Lake Park. You must have gotten that scene confused with the Grand Tower rooftop. So that's what happened. How dare they steal the memories of a great thief! They'll pay for this! Nevertheless, I wonder who the person that assaulted Kay was. The person in the red raincoat who appeared at Gord Lake. What the? Hmm? What's that noise? It sounds like it's coming from the storeroom. And Lada's still with us. Mr. Edgeworth, let's go check it out. What's this? My shutterbug sense is tingling. Oh, smell me another scoop. That's why she's quietly been listening this whole time. She's so nosy. You're still here. You've been quiet all this time. It's strange. What are you taking pictures of, ma'am? <laughs> April 6, 9.53 a.m. Grand Tower 51st Floor Storeroom. Oh. Miss Dratchworth, this walkie-talkie thing here is what's beeping. That looks familiar. <laughs> it's John Siva. Flashbacks to that horrible case of Phoenix and Maya and a certain someone. Why do I feel like I've seen it somewhere before? It's still beeping, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm not particularly familiar with this sort of device. Come on, we have to answer it. Here it goes. Hello, Edgeworth speaking. Hey, please don't just answer it on your own. Oh, I'm speaking with Mr. Miles Edgeworth, I presume. I'm, I'm too lazy. I normally would change the voice to have the, the cool radio effect, but I'm, I'm lazy, y'all. I don't care. <laughs> Do 
with his voices. Shelly the killer. Yeah, who else would it be, right? Oh, this is Jaya's music. I love you, Tequila. I love you. Twice in one game, we are spoiled. I congratulate you on your resolving the case. However, can you truly say in good conscience that it has been solved? Are you aware of the mastermind who is pulling the strings behind this incident? You! How do you know about the incident? That's not important right now, wouldn't you agree? Right now, we're discussing the mastermind behind this case. I've had an inkling that such a person existed, even before you said anything. After all, there was evidence to suggest that someone had used Kay to disrupt the investigation. Huh? There was? So, who's this mastermind? I'd like to hear your thoughts on the matter. How can we show you anything if you're <laughs> talking to us through a frickin' transceiver, bro? Would you kindly pretend to show me the evidence that indicates the existence of a mastermind? I mean, we talked about it, right? The letter. This indicates the existence of a mastermind in this case. Huh, I can't say I really understand. I'm very sorry, but I also- What? I thought it was the letter! Weren't we talking about the letters? Did I grab the wrong one? Keycard record... Oh no! The victim's letter? Maybe it's the victim's letter. I don't know. I am very sorry, but I also do not understand. <sighs> so this wasn't it? Wasn't there anything that was left unexplained among the evidence? I wait your answer, Mr. Edgeworth. I guess it doesn't matter! There's no penalty bar! Um... We have these for some strange reason. Why do we have this? Rinko. I mean... Maybe it's this letter? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, okay. I just picked the wrong letter then. <laughs> It was the letter that Kay allegedly sent to the victim. Come to think of it, I don't remember writing that letter at all. You could have prepared this letter. I too am quite curious to know. So you're not the one who wrote the letter? What could I possibly gain from doing such an act? Is it not necessary for you to stand in court in order to make the truth clear? What can you possibly do now that your badge has been taken from you? I look forward to finding out from the shadows. This man, how does he know that? Do we have an understanding? Please ensure you do not betray my trust. Now then, if you'll excuse me. He said the case wasn't solved yet. What did he mean by that? And why would Mr. DeKiller even bother telling us that? Ugh, <sighs> nothing makes sense anymore. This case has not reached its true conclusion yet. However, although I've lost my prosecutor's badge, who I am still has not changed. While I don't know where this may lead me, I shall reveal the truth. I swear it. Alright, the end of this case at last. So, now we are finally ready for the grand turnabout. Alright, well thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this. And until next time, have a nice day. Bye!